Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our consideration this evening is the Gospel reading, which was read just a few moments ago from St. Mark, uh, chapters 15 and 16. When God the Son took up human flesh in the Incarnation, God experienced physical exhaustion for the very first time. You see, baby Jesus needed sleep like any newborn baby, and he needed a good night's sleep every day until he died. He had rested from his labors on the seventh day of creation, but that indicated completion of creation with a continuation of preservation of that creation. As Jesus said after healing an invalid on the Sabbath day, he said, My Father is working until now, and I am working. But according to his human nature, he had to stop working from time to time to rest his weary eyes and his, you could say, his weary bones. This was a necessary part of fulfilling all righteousness for us since he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, yet without sin, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest to the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. So says the letter to the Hebrews. An event that most, I think, beautifully illustrates the two natures of Christ is when, during a storm, Jesus slept soundly in the stern of a boat, with the disciples being very worried while they were out on that Sea of Galilee. As the boat filled with water, the panicked disciples woke Jesus up, and he then rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. You see, according to his divine nature, he could restore the troubled waters to a state of rest and calm. According to his human nature, Jesus needed physical rest. Since Jesus truly is the God-man, his divine nature is immortal with ever watchful eyes, while his human nature was mortal, which meant that one day his eyes could flicker out. This is a paradox that we simply cannot understand. But it was necessary for our salvation, since only a man can die, and only God's death in the flesh can atone for the sin of the whole world. Yesterday we observed God the Son's eyes closing around 3 p.m. on Good Friday when the weight of the world's sins and the Father's wrath against our guilt shut Jesus' eyes in death. St. Mark identifies three women who rested their eyes on Jesus as he suffered and he died on that cross. Mary Magdalene, another Mary, and Salome. He also notes, and I read from Mark 15, when he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him, and there were so many other women who came up to him to Jerusalem. The Gospels make it clear that many women were supportive of Jesus' ministry and that he cherished their care and their friendship. Surely he had found much needed rest for his weariness and hunger in many of their homes through the years. But now they rested their eyes on unthinkable tragedy. Here their beloved teacher and Lord was dead. They could see nothing else to do than to provide a proper burial for his body. But how could a few Galilean women pull that off? Well, thanks be to God, they didn't have to. Joseph of Arimathea used his influential position to obtain the dead body of Jesus from Pilate. And then he donated his own tomb, which had been hewn out of rock. He donated a linen shroud to cover Jesus' naked body and laid it to rest in the tomb. 
But the two Marys in Salome observed during the burial that he had not been anointed with the traditional spices. So they saw fit to procure them and return to the tomb after the Sabbath to perform this task, since they couldn't do it during the day of rest. But as they rested their eyes on the sealed tomb, the women could not see two important facts about Jesus' body lying in that tomb. First of all, they did not recognize that Jesus' body had already been anointed for burial by another woman. If you remember, back on Ash Wednesday, we saw an anonymous woman crash a dinner party, hastily break open an alabaster flask of costly perfume and dump it on Jesus. The disciples thought this was just horrible waste, and they fussed at her. But Jesus responded by saying, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be, held, will be told in memory of her. Yes, the two Marys and Siloam either hadn't heard about this or they had forgotten it already. <coughs> the second thing <coughs> that they couldn't see was that Jesus' body wouldn't need any attention, especially after the Sabbath had passed, <coughs> <coughs> since he wouldn't be in the tomb. He had predicted over and over and over again that he would die and on the third day rise. But first he had to fulfill the Sabbath that he had instituted so long ago on the first day of rest, the seventh day of creation. On Monday, Thursday, we learned about the Passover and the Old Testament sacrificial system were types or prefigurements of what Jesus would accomplish at the Last Supper and on the cross. But now that the New Testament in Jesus' blood had come, these ceremonies had fulfilled their purpose. On Holy Saturday, the same thing happens with the Sabbath. Jesus fulfills the Sabbath once and for all by resting in the tomb. Then on Easter Sunday, the first day of a new creation, he bursts forth from the grave never to die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Tomorrow morning, we will see the women recognize this based on the testimony of the Easter angel. But on Good Friday and Holy Saturday, their eyes rested on the tomb of Jesus. They could see nothing but death. Most likely, their eyes were red from weeping and bleary from sheer fatigue. But no matter what they saw with their eyes, what God the Father saw was, you might say, a brief nap for his son after his death for the sin of the world. The third day was just around the corner. This should give encouragement to all of us now. We are heavy laden with guilt and weary from the effects of sin on this creation. Physical and emotional pain disrupt our sleep. Many times we lie awake in bed with worry for ourselves and our loved ones. Saddest of all, we rest our eyes in sorrow upon the sealed graves of our family members and friends who have been laid to rest. At such times, our eyes can see nothing but death. But come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. For Jesus is our Sabbath rest and says to you in the midst of your fatigue, your pain, and your sorrow, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Yes, in Jesus, there is rest for your soul now and resurrection in store for you and for all who believe and are baptized, even though one day our eyes will close in the sleep of death. So rest your eyes on Jesus and enjoy his peace, which surpasses all understanding. Amen. We continue with our next hymn. 